Welcome back. I have missed you. I have been recording a lot of episodes for you that we're going to be dropping over the next few months. And the first one, as always, I like to bring my husband Dustin is as we focus on talking about different things. And um, this time we're going to be talking all things marriage, but it's not just Dustin and I. We are bringing in Randy the Therapist. (laughs) So you get to hear Randy, Dustin, and I talk about marriage. And I am telling you, this is an episode that is pure gold. We, The three of us talk about the first time that Dustin and I went and saw Randy and the absolutely foundational truths and tools that he taught us that still impact how we communicate and how we relate with each other years later. So I'm really excited for you to hear this. Of course, this is not advice being given to anybody in an abusive relationship or an abusive marriage, but Randy is speaking to those who are in healthy marriages where you love each other, but you just got a few things, a few, Randy calls them wrinkles. (laughs) You just got a few wrinkles you'd like a little ironing out of, and that's what we're going to bring you today. So enjoy the love of my life and the best therapist in the whole world, Dustin and Randy. Good. Well, good. Randy, thanks for doing this today. We're excited. And you were, we had such a good time and before on our last season of the podcast. We talked, it's not a bear, anxiety, all these, you know, different levels of, you know, life. And I told, I asked you, I was like, would you do marriage one? And you were like, oh, that'd be fun. Yes. <laughs> There's- and so look who I got here with me. <laughs> I talked him into it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, babe. Hi, I haven't seen you today. <laughs> Thank you. So glad to be on with you and the therapist. <laughs> which I which I feel at times is two against one, but you know, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still willing. <laughs> yeah. If you have God and Holy Spirit on your side, you win. <laughs> But I have Randy, so. mm. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm excited, Randy. I want to kind of go back a year, a couple years ago. We came to you, you know, and we did it as a really. We weren't in. I was in personal stuff, but we weren't in trouble Mm -hmm. as a relationship. We were more just wanting to tune up. Yep. And we were handling some of the stuff I was going through. Uh, We. Do you remember this? Yeah, we. I think we. We had both personally gone through things yes. that we were trying to navigate. Not having to do with each other. Exactly. Uh-huh. Independently. Yep. Um, and obviously those things affect each other. Yeah. And uh, how we can support each other better, uh, better in our communication in those things. And But basically it was we were kind of there for each other going through their our- individual issue. Yes, exactly. So we come in and then our, some of our mentors were like, you've, you, you just need to, you need third party. Yeah. You need somebody to come in. You need somebody to listen to. And so that resulted in, which I think that was a really like positive way to enter like therapy, even though it wasn't even necessarily branded marriage therapy. It was more just, I don't, you know, ministry or whatever. But I think that we got a tune ups along yeah. the way. Yes. And we didn't see that because we thought it was like all yeah. the other stuff. Those were the problems. Yeah. <laughs> and there, those, and this is what Randy said. And Randy, I'm going to let you talk. Don't worry. <laughs> He's making notes. You're writing, aren't you? You're so taking notes. <laughs> Your MO. Um, but there was yep. so much. <laughs> but there was so much going on on the outside. And this is one of the things you said, Randy, was like, there's always going to be stuff going on on the outside. Let's get you guys really grounded. Yes. And a lot came out. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Came out. And I think some deep core uh-huh. uh, perspectives yeah. of maybe sometimes we go round and round on something that was, was surface level. But I think, Randy, I think what you started helping us do is go deeper into our own perspectives. And I think one thing that we, we use all the time, which I don't want to jump ahead of, of where you're no, going. Go. But the thing that we use all the time is really understanding that um, if, if, if one of us – um, I guess, how do you say about, um, it's it, like what I was just joking about. Like it's your, it's, that's your problem. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So that, do you that know whole what thing. About? Oh, I do know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You helped us. Oh, there's so much. This is going to be so fun. <laughs> I have a list. I literally have infantilizing, experiential reality, happy, sad, I see you, compromise, imposing, <laughs> how to deescalate. How long this? is this? I think I have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do it all with 
in an hour. But this is our this was our ground level sessions with you, but it helped us build a foundation for I guess probably what is the essential thing in a lot of relationships, which is communication understanding, empathy, all of those things that people who love each other can sometimes blow each other up in the smallest ways because some of these practices aren't, one, known. Well, known. Known. Yeah. We yeah. didn't know a lot. Yeah. You thought you were helping me at times when you were really hindering me. Oh, really? Because you <laughs> here we here so we here. go, and we're in, and we're into hashtag is, <laughs> hashtag infantilizing. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. I know what but you're talking you about. You know what I'm talking about. Is that mm-hmm. that sometimes I would um, I would, ba- I would baby you or yeah, try to yeah, try exactly. to care yeah. for things mm-hmm. when when I didn't need, it was hurting you yeah. because you just needed to be able to process those things on yeah, your or own. Or I needed or, to learn myself. Right. I needed to stumble. Right. And you, yeah. Right. And you didn't want to see me stumble because you <laughs> saw the, you saw the huge a log in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to start with Randy, and then I'm going to start asking you to dive into some of these concepts that you've taught us. Um, when we came to you, you said something that I thought was really good. And I just want to preface this for the listeners is that we came in, um, really in we we love each other you picked up on that Mm -hmm. and we came in really wanting to please each other and we came in very much even though we were we were both rescuing each other in some different ways like the heart both of our hearts were good you picked up on that and so you could counsel us according to having two good hearts towards each other and i know that's not always the case with all marriages Sometimes there are just really ugly things at play. And so I just want to like preface, this is not like SOS marriage talk. Yeah. This is like how to happily and healthily continue, grow, learn with somebody who also has a very good heart towards you. Right. So someone might be listening and and you are in a very unhealthy Mm-hmm. relationship but there's some dynamics there that you might need a, a different type or level of help maybe right. randy you can speak to this <clears throat> way way better uh, but we want to make sure that we don't take a one size fits all exactly with, with some of the yeah help. with some of the advice yeah because he would t- he told you at some point which i would like to talk about too like you imp- you are an imposer Mm -hmm. That is your personality. And I don't know if you remember this, Randy. I'm sure it's back on all your notes on us. (laughs) I hope nobody ever breaks into your office. (laughs) But you told Dustin, like, you are an imposing person. That's a part of who you are. And you, you, it's okay to impose. Now, to, in a, to say that to somebody without a good heart or that's abusive or controlling or manipulative, that's, that's Mm. giving them a gun. And so- yeah, the difference between an imposing person's personality, like Paul was imposing. Yep, yep. The yep. difference between <laughs> that and aggression is okay. mm-hmm. one is damaging and not looking at the other person with respect. Oh. Yeah. So when we Come lose on. respect, all we do is intimidate, overpower, harm. But respect allows for empathy, care, compassion, and all the things you were talking earlier. So mm-hmm. you both had that the whole time. You always have. But yep. but the external defenses, protective patterns, uh, the it's not a bear. The escalation yes. went to danger so that what happened was reaction uh, of mm-hmm. protection would occur. And when right. that occurred, it would impose on the other or pull away and feel alone and, and rejected. So mm-hmm. the whole beginnings of everything you're talking about starts with it's not a bear. How do you self-regulate? How do you calm mm-hmm. down? How do you recognize mm-hmm. what's going on? So I, I can go into that a little more, but I want to make sure if you had something else that you get to finish. Um, do you have any other? I, I know what I feel like we came in. I came in with yeah. to the meeting and I would like to hear your perspective. Well, I just think it, I think it's cool that you're doing this Thanks, for, for a couple different reasons. Really One, <laughs> we love Randy yeah. and, and it's just very, it's been eye opening. So I think I would say to anybody that's listening, uh, you don't have to be in trouble. Right to get coaching no. and, and the best athletes in the world listen to coaches that they, they can't even play the game like they Mm-mm. can, but they have a, they have a perspective mm-hmm. that allows them to grow it. And so I think it's just, it's taken us to the next level, mm-hmm. but it's also been difficult because we almost, we had to like, it almost got worse before it oh, yeah. got better. And you warned us on that one, Randy, you were like, that, this is going to get uglier <laughs> before it gets. That you got to do some work. And I, so yeah. I think marriages are listening, saying, I want to have a good marriage. Mm-hmm. It, it, 
it's it's not a apply one thing and you're going to have the happiest marriage ever. Mm -hmm. It is the beginning of a process of hard work, yeah. which is self it's self denial mm -hmm. and it's it's selflessness, mm -hmm. it's teachability. And I think I just can't overemphasize this enough. And I'm a, I'm a proud person. I don't, you know, it, it's, it's hard for me to take a, a lot of uh, correction and, what, and, and whatever, but you need this in your life yeah. to be effective. And so especially this has marriage. been, yep. especially in marriage. Mm -hmm. And, and so this has been so good. So anybody that's listening, just open your heart and, uh, and, and try to begin to apply some of these things, do the work and you can have the marriage that you want. Mm -hmm. And we're a work in progress and we're better than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. But we still have a long ways to go, and it's mm -hmm. just going to get better. Yeah. And but it's it's about the work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Randy, what was your impression when we first came to you? As far as <laughs> what, and I've told you before, all I can edit anything as usual, so you can you <laughs> just speak freely. <laughs> what was your impression as far as what was going on between us, and what were you wanting to work out in us, and are probably still wanting to work out in us? <laughs> well, I think to some degree, it's what you already said. It's the fact that. Uh, both you have great hearts, you care, you're committed, you're committed to God, you're committed to learning. Mm -hmm. But when we don't feel known, heard, listened mm -hmm. to, understood, yes. we fight yep. louder. We, we, we get stronger at yeah. screaming. It's like drowning. You mm -hmm. flail about more. The person mm -hmm. who's putting out amount of energy when they're drowning is phenomenal. In fact, they put out more mm -hmm. energy when you're drowning than when you're right. just swimming. Because <laughs> you're you're wow. flailing everywhere, <laughs> yeah. right? So, yeah. so, you know, you guys, you were flailing in some areas while swimming smoothly in others. Because mm -hmm. you would swim at times, you thought, "Ah, oh, we've got it under control." But areas <laughs> where <laughs> flailing and some water got in your lungs, and you were coughing and you're flailing about, you didn't know how to get out of the conflict, the difficult, those that arose. When it was smooth, it was smooth. It was beautiful. So it's really mm. more about conflict resolution that yeah. we had to go in its purest form. Mm. Historically, conflict resolution, we've taught by saying, okay, active listening. Okay, good, give feedback. Tell the other person what you heard. Well, that's great if you're calm. But if I'm already <laughs> escalated, you know, right? I, if you look like a bear, you, I'm out. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to yell at you my view, and I want you to hear it, and I want to be mm -hmm. right. You know, mm -hmm. it's yeah, not yeah. about me hearing you. I, you may do that once or twice, but by the third time, I'm just going to argue my point, you know, mm -hmm. and make you mm -hmm. listen. And so for you guys, that was the confusion because you would try to yeah. listen, you'd try to carry, and like, yeah. just like you said. You would be giving to the other person, but not what they needed. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. a, a really simple good. example of that was uh, there was a man who was a radio, uh, Christian radio broadcaster, and he was uh, down here in Southern California, and he had six kids. And he had worked hours. He'd drive an hour and a half into the station, hour and a half back every day, was there for hours. And his wife took care of the six kids. And he'd go out to lunch with people, active, do stuff. But he called every so often. We'd call his wife during the week and say, I'm coming home early. I'm going to take you out to dinner. And his whole intent was to care for her and give her a break from the kids. Uh huh. Okay? Like a good she heart. knew how hard he worked and how loving he was. So she said, yes, let's go to dinner. But then she had to prepare all six kids for school, <laughs> get it, get them all ready for bed, make sure their hey, homework right, was done. Right. The pressure before he got in was overwhelming. And those were wow. always times they went out and fought <laughs> because wow. oh, they man. both were so triggered and escalated, but they were doing it with a good heart. He was trying to yeah. give her a break. She was trying to Aww. give him a break from all his tough times. And they didn't talk to each other to say, what do you need? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. when they stopped to say, what do you want? They realized mm -hmm. he wanted to stay and be with the kids. And mm -hmm. she he wanted, wanted just out. to hang out with him. So he came home mm -hmm. to be with the kids. And then that resolved. So sometimes wow. we, we need to know what is the other person's reality? What is their yep. experience? Mm -hmm. What are they going through? And that's what we really worked on with you guys. And the mm -hmm. way you start is you go with, again, with the whole issues of it's not a bear. It's what's escalating you. What's your, mm -hmm. your recognition of your reactions, your pet, your physical, mm -hmm. emotional, yes. and thought reactions. So once you recognize your reactions. Randy, Randy say that one more time. The, the pet. Physical, emotional, yeah. 
and thought reactions. And yes. all of that was in the last, so I'm building yep, a little bit off episode. of our last yeah. time, but it, yep. it's good to repeat. I don't mean that. It's just that it's yeah, there. It's People good. want to hear it. I listened to it mm -hmm. last night to know what I said because I <laughs> wanted to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Uh, <laughs> so correct me if I make a mistake, please, you guys. No, it's good. <laughs> so your physical, emotional, and thought reactions, when you're aware of those, and you become recognizing them. They tell you if you're at a bear level, if you're at a fight or flight or freeze mm -hmm. reaction. Mm -hmm. So all of those are indicators of what's going on at the deeper level of our conscious in our unconscious levels. Mm -hmm. So if we know what our reactions are and we become aware of those, we then can go to reality and say, how dangerous is this? Mm -hmm. How severe is this? So the more we start recognizing the reality, we can then start relaxing and taking a breath. It's not a bear. These are mm. add-ons. These are from my family or from someone that burned me. This is from a dog that bit me. That's why I'm afraid of the dog or, like you said, a furry animal, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and so it's just any furry animal. So as we get uh, working through our add-ons, which is what we worked on quite a bit for you guys. Mm -hmm. As you take away the add-ons, you then are left with your brain, your soul, and your heart, and you can then have all your resources to focus on resolving the actual issue mm -hmm. you're dealing with. Yes. Otherwise, you're bringing all the historical, add -ons. all the add-ons, and you're yeah. intensifying <laughs> the moment. And so you know your heart. I mm -hmm. love you. I'm wanting to help you. You're not taking mm -hmm. yep. it. Ah, and now my intensity comes in and the other person's going, oh no, mm -hmm. ah, I'm being overwhelmed. And they right. withdraw and pull back, which is hurtful. So now right. both are escalating and it's actually out of good intentions of not recognizing our reactions, yeah. our add-ons, taking a breath, looking at the reality and saying, no, I love her. She loves me. God's with yes. us. Let me take a breath. Let me slow it down Yes. so that now I can look for solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, question. What if two people slow it down in different ways? For mm. example. Of course. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> of course, there's, there, would be, there would be no other option in this. Um, you know, I, I need space. I need to think. I need to get in my head. I need to work it out in my head. D is a verbal processor. He will slow down the minute he expresses. Right. And I will react because I, I, I'm I not getting space. But it hurts him to take for me to take space because that feels, I don't want to put words in your mouth. What does that feel like when I'm like, I need to, I need a minute? Well, I think part of it is maybe sometimes my lack of trust. If we have space come back that will talk. actually come back and resolve. And talk about it. it. So mm -hmm. for me to feel connected. Mm -hmm. I have to have closure yep. to that. Like we made amends. We, we're okay. Yeah. We're right. Mm -hmm. And for you, you, you're you okay yeah. with just saying, I need space. You'll process it, but <laughs> then we won't talk again. <laughs> oh, what? totally. Yeah. But my heart will be to talk again. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I won't. Absolutely. <laughs> but I won't. So you're talking. So what would you say to that? Right. You're talking about awareness <laughs> first individually. You have to be aware of who you are, of your reactions, your personality, your being. And, mm -hmm. and the same for the partners, whoever it is, mm -hmm. both have to be aware. If at least one is aware of who they are and what they need, they can stabilize so they can be now attentive to the other person mm -hmm. and not take their reactions, their escalations personally. Mm -hmm. So let me back up. And That's explain. really hard. Uh, it is. So let me back <laughs> oh, it up. Okay, yep. <laughs> and, and, and go with first John Gottman, okay. who is one of the foremost researchers on healthy marriages, says mm -hmm. that Marriages that are healthy, relationships of all types that are healthy and unhealthy, have about the same number of conflicts. Hmm. But one healthy resolves them quickly. Hmm. So it's kind of wow. like walking with God. I mean, <laughs> right? we all have conflict in our walk with God. Anyone that says they never have a difficulty hasn't read I, scripture and is yep. probably not very honest <laughs> with themselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we resolve faster as we mm. have faith that God is with us, as we have oh. real relationship with him, as we bond and he comes and says, yes, you're going to deny me, Peter, and you're still my rock, and I love you, and here mm. eat. So as we have those experiences where Jesus says to Peter, I know you, 
I see you. I understand you. What you did yes. hurt, but I love you. When we have those experiences with each other, conflict becomes easier to attain. So hmm. the first step of conflict resolution at its purest form is yeah. it's not a bear, the five phases. Yep. Yep. You know, self-regulation, we'll call it. Yep. So you have to know who you are, know it well, enjoy who you are, celebrate who you are, so you can regulate to be able to connect with the other person. Now, mm -hmm. we often do that on simple things like eating hamburger. If my wife and I go order a hamburger and it has onions on it, I'm going to say that hamburger is horrible. <laughs> right. Me too. <laughs> yeah, yay! We know we're right. Jamie, we don't know where you're at on this. Okay. You've taken Randy. You've one. taken Randy from me. <laughs> and, go and, on. I'm very into this example. Here we go. Yeah, we're going to continue this one. If it comes with ketchup, my wife's going to say it's horrible. And I'm going to say it's good. Hmm. Yep, me too. We all understand that with each other because it's called hmm? taste. It's nothing. We don't mm. put value behind it. We don't mm. oh, tend man. to get emotionally wow. involved in it. <laughs> but if we, <laughs> if, we celebrate, if we celebrate our differences, mm. okay, and we say, yes, you're different than me and the way you handle it, the way you withdraw, the way you need to go mm. and process, the way you need to... Uh, resolve your issues internally, and so you can come back in a you know self-regulated, self-contained, calm way mm -hmm. is different than me, and we celebrate that. Now we're going to yes. have conflict resolved faster, easier, and smoother. But we have trouble doing that because we don't feel listened to. We don't. We feel marginalized by the other person, mm -hmm. and and some of that marginalization, some of that disrespect, some of that is both my own stuff that I'm bringing in from history, my add-ons. Yep. Yep. So the more I can be aware of my add-ons, the more I can see that they're occurring when I interact with someone else. Now, a lot of our history, a lot of our own stuff, we don't recognize till we interact with someone. Mm, in other words, yeah, when I when yeah. I deal with some yeah, when I'm dealing with someone individually, we can only go so far. It's when they interact with someone else that all the stuff gets triggered. Mm. And then we can see add-ons, we can see reactions, we can see historical traumas, we can see these add-ons that come from my personality, that come from all the stresses of life, the current life stressors. All these things come into our relationship, but I don't know how they impact me if I'm just talking from my own viewpoint of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need someone else's viewpoint to give me yeah. peripheral vision. Mm. You only have peripheral really vision good. and depth when you have a difference of viewpoint. Wow. That's <laughs> really good. Your right eye cannot see your left hand stretched out perpendicular to your body. It cannot mm -hmm. see it, but your left eye can. So if your mm. left arm is stretched out, your right eye won't see it, but your left eye does. And that's peripheral vision. So you have 180 degrees of view, but it's only with two eyes. Mm. <laughs> Because you can't see all the way. So the differences is what gives us depth perception mm -hmm. and peripheral vision. So if we had the brain saying to the left eye that's looking at the left arm stretched straight out to the side, and it says, you're a liar because the right eye doesn't see you. If the brain mm. said it, we would have an internal conflict and we would not see clearly. Right. Mm -hmm. In marriages and relationships, we have to say, why do you have that experience? Let me understand it so that we can put it all together and not call each other Man. liars, <laughs> but put it together. Oh, conviction. Have, Utopia. Conviction. <laughs> Utopia. Utopia no. for you, conviction. For me. <laughs> <laughs> and there are our add-ons right there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Randy, that's so good. Okay, so you were okay. What were you just? What were you saying before? Um, bringing it all together and saying, "What's your experience?" Right. So I call that experiential reality. Reality. Please talk about this. This, this was life changing for us. Yeah. Yeah. Reality. Sorry to the listeners. We might actually just get into some <laughs> session here. <laughs> this, has been, this has been We're huge. letting you have a peek into yeah, our- Yeah, big uh, time peek. Big okay. Time so peak. what you just said and what you're talking about, and you <clears> talked <throat> earlier, is coaching, mentoring. Yeah. Okay. So yep. a lot of what we're doing here right now and what we've done is more coaching and mentoring- than true therapy. 
Okay. Mm, we do yeah. some, but most of it is coaching and mentoring. Mm-hmm. Now, I like that. tell me the difference between mentoring and tormentoring. Mm. One is positive, one is negative. Is this that's a quick, trick di- question? Yes. That's the only <laughs> difference. Because I like to torment people, question. but it helps. I hope people. <laughs> so, good, oh, no. good mentoring, good therapy has yeah. a certain Torments? edge of pain to it. Yeah. And it's kind okay. of torment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, wow. Think of the disciples it walking is. with yep. Jesus. How much torment did they go <laughs> yeah. through? How much internal <laughs> conflict and yeah. evaluations? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we all have to go through that. So, But we each experience life differently. The way yep. Jesus experienced life the way compared to the apostles. The way Peter experienced life compared to how Paul did. The way I experienced going to an opera with my wife compared to what she experiences <laughs> going to an opera. She was a professional <laughs> opera singer. Going to an right. opera... She gets excited and loves. I go to an opera and I go, how much longer before I can leave? (laughs) So our experiences of those and what we call our reality will differ. But they're experiential realities. They are because what is the reality is only what God tells us and the scripture has. So we Mm -hmm. we don't have a grasp or corner on reality. On real reality. This is Mm -hmm. on real reality. We, yeah, we don't. Is great. God it's is all it. filtered. It's all filtered. All filtered. It yeah, has to okay. it's filter through so my good. finite being, my yes. experiences, mm. my hurts, my pains. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to talk about. There's three mm-hmm. factors of, this is good. of what we do to create our person, our experiential reality. Okay. And we'll get to those in one minute. But the experiences are my reality, mm-hmm. which is what you were doing as we worked on your add ons, as we worked mm-hmm. on your. Uh, PET, physical, emotional, and thought reactions, as you were getting proficient in those areas, you started knowing your experiential reality, Mm -hmm. what you were experiencing in any moment, in any situation, and you called it your reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's an experiential reality. Mm -hmm. Okay, There are some things that we could preach on that are absolute realities. Jesus is Christ, Lord. He's our Savior. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are Mm -hmm. things we can talk that we hold to that holds us together which is basically what a good marriage is based on. The reality that's absolute and should be absolute is the ring, Mm -hmm. our covenant, our promises before man and God. This is a covenant. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to go there a second and come back to experiential reality, but this is important to understand that it's like communion. Mm. Communion is a reminder of the covenant Jesus gave to us, and we are being reminded with the cross that's a visual reminder of the covenant and the promises. So anywhere we go, we can say, look at the cross. Someone loves me and accepts me just like I am. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's the same for us as Christians. We should be walking that our covenant, our promise to each other is a ring that we show to the world and say, there's someone with me. They know I'm a jerk. Mm. They know I mess up. (laughs) I know they do. And we love each other and accept each other. And we're going to work through those issues that we have. A Peter who denies Mm -hmm. Christ that messes up, but still maintains the connection and relationship. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. in a marriage, we have a covenant called the wedding vows. We have a visual reminder of the ring. And then we have sex, which is a physical reminder of the covenant. And it's only with my wife or my husband, my partner, because it is saying this is a reminder of the covenant, which is communion. Mm, And communion is the body and blood of Christ mixing with my body and blood. And it is a reminder of the covenant that we have promised to each other. Right. So that's the basis of a marriage, which Mm -hmm. you guys have, which we talked about, which is what builds the trust that we can build Mm -hmm. on from there. So then it's skills after that. If someone doesn't (laughs) have that type of trust. This is where it gets hard. (laughs) It does. But if they don't have that trust in the first place, Jamie, we have to go and say. The shared reality of those three. If they don't have the shared reality of those three things. The shared reality of. uh, we, the shared reality of Jesus Christ and a covenant. If I the covenant, don't have, right, covenant, right, the if covenant. I don't okay, have yeah. the mm-hmm. covenant shared reality that my word mm-hmm. and her word are good. That's not trust experiential. Is broken. No, gotcha. yep. no, you can't. You can't That's, build on it. You can't. That's the basis. Right. That's good. 
So, ba- so out of that trust, which is that that's the reality we agree on, that is that is not experiential. Out of that covenant, then the now we build comes. on now the heart. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's the same for a Christian. We yep. tell them, come down front, get saved. Here's how you get <laughs> saved. You just recognize that you are a right. sinner and you need Christ. Mm-hmm. It's all it is. It's real simple. Make a promise, accept his covenant. Now mm-hmm. comes the work of now living comes as the a work. <laughs> right. This is so true. Yeah. And, and oh, it's wow. hard work because yep. the chaos of this world is constantly mm-hmm. attacking our beliefs. Mm-hmm. That, and, mm-hmm. and all the chaos is constantly attacking our marriages and mm-hmm. our relationships. And we have to constantly stop, recenter ourselves, grab back to the basics of the covenant, the reminder of the ring, the cross, the reminder of our communion, the reminder of our mm-hmm. physical relationship. The reminder we made promises to each other and that that's our basis to move forward. So, like you said earlier, I'm not talking about traumas or difficulties or right. abuse or um, yeah. affairs right now. Right. That has to be healed at that level. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Okay? So, that's the yeah. healing at that level that has to go. So with you guys, that wasn't an issue. That's the base that's beautiful that we said, yes, you know your covenant. Mm-hmm. You you honor it to each other. So let's go to the next. That's experiential realities. Mm-hmm. So to get there, <laughs> that's, started that's where with, we get fun. <laughs> 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 to get there again starts with awareness, recognition mm-hmm. of who I am, and self-regulation. All of it's not mm-hmm. a bear. Then we go to three parts that make up any experiential reality. My personality, my mm-hmm. perspective, and my protections. Mm. Let's understand mm. how that works. <laughs> <laughs> personality. So I'm an extrovert, high energy, outgoing, love to talk. My <laughs> wife is more introverted, quiet. So when I get loud, she gets a little scared. That's mm. personality. Personality yep. If I go to a party, I'm going to enjoy the party. It's loud and all sorts of stuff going on. I'll come back and say, where's the next party? (laughs) I want to go to a party with you sometime. Yeah, you and I, man, we'll go. (laughs) We're going to go. I want to see see you at a party. I'll go go read a book next to your wife and not talk. (laughs) Exactly. And three days of rest afterwards for her. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. But that's that's good, though. Yeah. That's personality. That, that's based on mm-hmm. personality. It's not mm-hmm. wrong because it's God given. Can I? So we ask have you something? to honor. Oh, absolutely. Do you get just using you and your wife as an example? Do you? I, I actually. What if you don't like that about your wife? Well, what first do we off, do? What do we? Or, or off, we, am I getting ahead of you? No, am no, I getting no, ahead no. Of it's you? fine. Okay. Why don't I like it? If it's personality, yeah, we can this talk is I, about that. But mm-hmm. often it's not that I don't like it. I don't understand it. Okay. Oh, Ooh. yeah. That's, there, there it is. It is. I, knew, I knew you had it back there. My yeah, wife okay. had a 50th birthday party when we celebrated and had a bunch of people over. Mm-hmm. She would take a break every so often and go into the bedroom <laughs> and just be alone for 10 minutes, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, and just recoup. Mm-hmm. And people mm-hmm. would say, where's, where's Cass? And I'd say, mm-hmm. ah, she's taking a break. Is everything mm-hmm. okay? Everything's great. Just leave her <laughs> because alone, she's taking a go. break. <laughs> yeah. Because she's right, right. taking a break. Right. So, because, so you've learned to understand it. Yes. Okay. Which helps you not be annoyed by that she's not like you. You celebrate those differences. God mm, gave her to me yeah. because yeah. I will overcommit and get, yeah. I devote mono twice, mononucleosis oh, really? twice, because oh. I'll just push through and ignore pain. Uh. Yeah, mm-hmm. And she knows how to rest, but she'll rest and I pull her to go do stuff. So we're right. actually mm-hmm. in that tension so of respect. Oh. Yes. yes, We help each other not go to the extremes our personality would take a us. A tension of respect. I like that a yeah, lot. It is. That's really very good. good. And it's like Paul and Peter had respect for each other, but tension between them. Paul got angry at Peter for denying <laughs> Christ, but mm-hmm. not there, but he, it's the same personality that went yep. and said, you have to be circumcised. Mm-hmm. And Paul says, right. no, you don't, no, you Peter. Don't. <laughs> yeah. right. And there was the battle. And Peter had mm-hmm. to learn to calm down. I mean, Paul had to learn to calm down. Barnabas mm-hmm. had to step in a few times. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so both of their personalities were what God built the church on and Christ built the church on. But out of control, Peter denies Christ. But under control, he pleases God. He seeks his heart. He's a man that's just... Mm-hmm wants to please and cut the ear off of the centurion. Paul, out of control, kills Christians. 
His passion was beautiful. And it's only that obsessive, compulsive, perfectionistic, driven person that could write most of the New Testament. Right. 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 So the personalities are good. They're Mm God-given. We want to celebrate. So if I don't like my wife's personality, chances are it's an add-on somewhere in my own life. In your own life. Okay, this is exactly what I was going to ask is what, what would you say to the person who doesn't, it's so far down the road of I do not like that they are like X, Y, and Z. As a rule, when we are saying mm-hmm. it that way, instead of saying, I don't mm-hmm. understand it, or man, she needs a break and I don't get it because I'm ready to move on. If I say I don't like it, it's usually my issue mm-hmm. because I'm not celebrating who the other person is, who God made them. Mm-hmm. In a way, I'm saying, God, you didn't make them very well. Mm-hmm. They should be more and like since, me. <laughs> yeah. And since I don't want to tell God <laughs> he didn't do it well, <laughs> I don't think I'm, I want to look at the person and say, yeah. who are you? How can I understand you? Yeah. Okay. Really good. Yeah. Can and, we and, do, can we side table the understanding thing for later? Yes. Okay. Yes, how to absolutely. like practically do that? But I want to hear the other two parts of. So personality reality. is how we part of what influences how we interact with any situation or circumstance, and we develop an experiential reality from just personality. Mm-hmm. Perspective is it's a lot of stuff. Perspective is uh, all our socialization, all our upbringing, all our mm-hmm. teaching, all our experiences. So we develop filters, like you said earlier, Jamie. So filters that that um, we look at life, we ex- how we perceive life. So for me, I'm the baby in the family of four, and I was made fun of by my older siblings. Normal, you know? Mm-hmm. So if someone interrupts me, if someone disagrees with me, historically, I'd be ready to fight them mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that felt like yep. they were disrespecting yep. me. And my little kid came out, my add-on. Yep. That's my perspective. Another simple perspective would be, uh, let's say University of Texas played USC in football. (laughs) The last play of the game, you guys run for a touchdown, and we think there's a penalty. I'm going to say that was a poor game and a poor call, and you're going to say that was a good game (laughs) and a good call. Mm -hmm. And the only reason is you're in Texas and I'm in California. (laughs) Right. It's where we're from. So our perspective Mm. of of that event is shaped and and molded by where we came where from, from, not the reality oh, of that event. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's really good. You open this Christmas gifts so... on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. Oh, this is right. our thing. This right. is our thing. <laughs> Christmas gifts. <laughs> do you even celebrate Christmas? How you were taught, <laughs> oh man! How you were taught right. is yep. going <laughs> to make you feel awkward or uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not right or wrong. That's what, oh, it's not right or you. wrong. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sexy Bates boy over oh, there. Oh, wow. Let's get back <laughs> to the, what was it? Not experience or reality. <laughs> <laughs> communion. 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 <laughs> later. The later. third part of communion. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a sex no, episode is, later, yes, Randy. Randy, oh, season absolutely. three, a sex episode. Um, absolutely. Uh, that would actually be great. <laughs> it's a great idea, actually. Um, really? But... That's exactly what I was going to say is it's not right or wrong, but it feels right or wrong. That's correct. So how how does somebody, how do you remedy that? How do you remedy when you are so sure you're right? Which is why we start with it's not a bear. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. de-escalate. Yes. If I'm so intense on a situation of whether to open Christmas gifts on Christmas (laughs) Eve or Christmas day. (laughs) Okay. That's an add on. I need to look at myself and say, okay, it's really only a one on a scale of 10 of danger. Mm, I love your numerical system. Why am I feeling like an eight? (gasps) Right. Is it my personality? Mm. Is it my history? Is it an Mm add-on? So I need to know my physical, emotional, and thought reactions so that I can recognize I'm overreacting Mm -hmm. to a situation. Then I need to know, is this an add-on? Pull it apart. Look at what's the add-on. So I can self-regulate and come back in and say, you know, it's really uncomfortable to open a gift, but I know it's not bad or wrong, Hmm. Mm. but I'm going to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we know there's personalities involved in in experiential reality, when we know there's perspectives that taint and, and influence our experiential realities, we have more tolerance for each other to realize Absolute reality is a hard thing to grasp. To get. Yeah. To ever get to. So good. The third component is protections. Mm. Yeah, this is big. Yeah. Protections are what we all develop. Now, again, I'm high energy, so my personality, 
Uh, my perspective was I'm the fourth in the baby in the family of four. I was a football player, wrestler. I, um, I also was in the army. You mix that together. My protection <laughs> is aggression. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you disagree with me and I want to pick you up and throw you against the wall. I mean, that's my, which is great when you're playing football or you're wrestling. Right, right, right. right. It's not so good when you're wrestling. <laughs> in other words, right. when you're having relationship and enjoying <laughs> someone else in a marital way and mm -hmm. you get angry or upset, that's mm -hmm. not the place to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So my protective reaction of aggression, I had to practice how to deal with that. So let's mm. go back. Personality yep. has to be managed and, and, and compensated for. Because if I just say, oh, it's my personality, deal with it. No. Peter had to manage his. Mm. Paul had to manage his. We have to manage really our good. personalities. Okay, yep. this okay? is really good. Yeah, yeah. Perspectives are learned, so they need to be corrected. I need to be open to hear what the you know that there's another option. I need to be teachable. Proverbs teaches but, a lot about between each that. other, between each between other, each other, mm. and and books yep. and great books and that are out there and and teaching just being in teachable in general. Mm. You, you really do. Proverbs yep. tells us that. So I need to hear what, what church is saying, what good books are being talked about. Yep. The more I can read others, I'm teachable. The more I'm going to learn a healthier perspective of life. Mm, Otherwise, really I narrow my perspective, and now I am in a tunnel, and I can only see in a very, very narrow way instead of as God has called us to see it. Right. Mm. So that needs corrected, a learning, teachable spirit. Yep. Third is it's a protection. That's from a harm, a damage, a, a danger. So again, mm. go back to what we talked on. What's your danger level? The more mm. I'm aware of my dangers, the more I can evaluate, are they real? Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing it's not a bear, I can look at my protections and say, is this a real issue? If it is, mm. then let me deal with it. Let me run from the bear. Let me fight the bear. Yep. If it's not, let me cure heal the problem, which is what we do when we go to add-ons that are historical traumas. We're healing them. Right. Add-ons that are learned, we're reteaching. That's called a new perspective, a new view. And that's possible. As we do, what's that? And that's possible. Yes. To relearn, oh, retrain, re absolutely. completely reset. Yeah. Okay. That's absolutely. good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Renew your mind. Capture your thoughts. Mm -hmm. God's already told us that. Scripture is very clear. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Brandon, can we I, can, can, I, do can that. I interject on that and just say, okay, so yes. there's a lot of, you know, in, in what I do in pastoring, whatever, there is a sometimes a lot of um, arguments or rebuttal about, so capturing our thoughts, making them obedient to Christ. How does that line up with therapy? Is it, is it, is that really neurologically possible? Is it, so I think this is a key thing when you're saying that you, here, here you are with all your education, all your knowledge, but you're applying the principle of scripture that this is possible. It is absolutely possible. Mm -hmm. It's hard work. Peter <laughs> had to learn to renew yeah. his mind. Mm -hmm. mm. So that he said, supernatural hey, miracle. It is no, work. It's hard work. There are times really God will do miracles, and, but most of sure. the time we take the promised land by force. We have to go and fight mm, our way across the good. promised land. And, and we act like it's just a miracle. No, when we get a miracle, praise God, I'm in. And if, <laughs> if you come in and come to counseling and we pray and you're healed, I'll give God glory and watch you walk out. <laughs> right. But if you come in and we have to work, I'll still give God glory. Yeah, God glory. Right. Yes. So let's yep. go to a broken good. bone. Let's go yeah, to a yeah. broken bone. Who heals the broken bone when they put it in place and put a cast around it? <laughs> I'm so scared to answer his questions because <laughs> you're always tricky. But but it, it's God healed it. Oh, the oh, doctor <laughs> didn't have... heal it. Doctor Jesus, Doctor Jesus, Doctor Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Well, think okay. about it though. The doctor mm -hmm. knows the to doctor. Take an okay. Right. Yes. Right. Put doctor the bone knows in to place. put it in a cast. But and we know that that there's electrical impulses that send the signal out to ask for calcium and glue to be sent to the mm. broken bone and and glue it together. We don't know yeah. how it does that exactly. <laughs> it's right, that's supernatural. By God. Mm. But, yes, it is. That's, it, that's it's supernatural. A miracle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The difference between that miracle and what we call miracle is time. One takes six oh. or eight weeks, <laughs> and six oh. or eight weeks to heal and work on it and do therapy. <laughs> The other is instantaneous. 
but they are exactly the same, the same. thing. They're both yeah. miracles. One, All right, I, might be, I might be preaching this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I might be preaching this he's, Sunday, he's Randy. I'm going to give you notes. credit. <laughs> you, you go for it. That's it's that's so just good, the truth, Randy. Well, good. and it doesn't alienate a, sp- a s- it doesn't alienate anyone, right? That's with correct. the struggles, the every like, yeah, it's oh, it's so so good. So, a question about protectives. You said yours was yes. aggression. What are some other protective practical like what what can pop up as protectives? Is oh, would like man. withdrawing be one? Withdrawing, which is what my wife. Would I think do. that's probably one of my. Oh, I was that's, your wife and I. I feel like we would be besties. And we would never talk. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> we you would just read her. next She's to awesome. each other. Um, but it's like withdrawing. I feel like would you say that's one of my? Yeah. What would you say one of yours is like a protective thing? Defense. Oh, Did, I'm answering. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, Anything else you want to add? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm defensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's it for yeah. sure. Defensiveness, mm-hmm. um, explaining myself, my motives. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think the defensive probably is probably number one. For you, yeah. yeah. You go to cognitive real quickly. You try to Dust- realize and understand it, what what's going on. So you mm-hmm. try Why to are we trying to answer it? this, Randy. What oh, are no, we? No, you're good. I'm glad <laughs> I'm you're answering. I'm just saying. <laughs> You, yeah. And it's beautiful because when I yeah. need help and a solution, I'm going to come to you because you're brilliant. Yeah, yeah. You're wonderful <laughs> on that. Sure. Yeah. And withdrawal is appropriate. There are times we need to run away from the bear. Mm-hmm. Turn yeah. and get yeah. away. So yeah. withdrawal and cognitive rationalizing, understanding, explaining, resolving, both are mm-hmm. beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. Workaholism. That's mm-hmm. a protection. Alcoholism. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, over-spiritualizing. And I hate mm-hmm. to use that one, yeah. but- there are no, people that just hide no. behind the Bible and hide yep. behind spirituality. And all they're really doing is not dealing with their issues. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. You know, and that's all yep. any of this is. We don't want to deal with it because it's painful. It's tough. I've mm. got to heal a bone. I've got to put it mm. in place. I've got to put a cast around it of church members and small group that's helping to hold my hand in place till it heals, to hold yep. myself in place till I heal. So we're really, the church is really helping to heal the soul and the, and the relationships when we hold each other accountable and put it in place. It's mm-hmm. good. So uh, with, you know, protective patterns are ways to not go and get my, my arm put in place. Now, the sad part is someone who has a broken arm and doesn't put it in the right, at the right uh, yeah. place in the right order, it Ooh. heals at an that angle and it has to be rebroke yep. no. and then put in place with Whoa. pins. Yeah. And that's so, about the time we all get married. That's a bunch of time. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so you have oh, personality man. that needs mm-hmm. to be managed, compensated for. Mm-hmm. Yep. You have perspective that needs to be corrected, right. relearned, because mm-hmm. you've been taught. It's only yep. from mm-hmm. a learned base. You have protections that are absolutely necessary because we have so many dangers in life. But yeah. we need to cure the injuries so that the protections don't own us <laughs> and carry us away with each other. Man, So that my is wife really and good. I... She came from an alcoholic home. I came from a home where my mom would spread the, the couches out and wrestle all wrestle the boys. With you. Yeah, I remember that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get married. We come together. I'm already high energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already learned that mm-hmm. wrestling and loud sounds in the room were fun. It's happiness, right? right. It's right. happiness. That's your experiential reality. Yeah. T- tell is. me you did not try to wrestle her mom. <laughs> no, I, her two brothers were great wrestlers, so we all wrestled, actually. <laughs> but what happened is the fact that then she would, I would get high energy and doing something excited, mm-hmm. and she would get scared because in her family, if it got loud, it may mean the police were called or dad was going mm-hmm. to yell or fight. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so then she'd come and say, you're out of control. <laughs> And I would get offended because, again, being the baby, they told me what I thought and they told me what I was thinking. So I would get angry and she'd go, see, you're angry, (laughs) which then would anger me more. So it would scare her Hmm. more. So we actually increased each other's protection. Been been there. When we both started celebrating each other's experiential realities and understanding Hmm. all of this and working on our add-ons and working on our pet, physical, emotional, and thought reactions. We then looked at each other, and I'm going to make me look good first. When we got ex- <laughs> intense and loud, and I would say to her, wow, my volume, this intensity is scaring you, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. This is real frightening. She'd go, yeah, I'm scared. i go, oh, that's horrible. So I'm joining her experiential mm-hmm. 
reality. I'm not saying so it's good. real. I'm joining <sighs> what she is experiencing. Mm-hmm. And saying, oh, I come alongside you. Jesus wept when he went to Lazarus' grave. Mm-hmm. Yep. He, he comes knew he alongside. Was raise him. Yep. He knew he was yeah. going to raise him. So <clears throat> wow. we come alongside and we mm-hmm. join the other person's experiential reality. Mm-hmm. And we, we join them empathetically and caringly. Then I say, I'm not angry. I'm not out of control. I'm having fun. And she goes, wow, it doesn't seem like it. So now Mm. we're connecting and we're attaching. Yeah. Or she would come to me and say, I know you're just having fun. I know you're not out of control. I'm scared though. Mm -hmm. Uh, I need quiet right now because I need to know how to heal this fear and anxiety in me, but I'm feeling it. She's not threatening me, attacking me, belittling me. She's just sharing with me. Her right. greatest fear. Can I pause this story? Absolutely. Okay, question. Because I'm just picturing this going down between us. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I were to tell you I was scared, yeah, you would be very. Uh, yeah, I think upset. my first reaction would be offense. Like, how could you? Like, how, how could, could you, you ever be, think I would? With how I, what I've done, how I have mm-hmm. cared for you, how how I, how much I love you, how could you ever be scared? That would be my reaction. So he would have a hard time, which is wrong. Seat, I know sitting in my experiential <laughs> reality. Well, and it goes vice versa. You can come at me later, but it um, it, it, it he would be hard for him as much as his heart wants to sit in my experiential reality. If he would have a really hard time accepting that I just I feel like accused you of something that isn't the base in, reality, right? And and that's how do why you maneuver called, that when you? Oh no, yeah. that's beautiful. But that's why it's called experiential reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's what mm-hmm. you are experiencing. I'm not trying to impose it on you. Mm-hmm. You're not agreeing with her that you're scary. That's right. I am not. Okay. I'm understanding. That's <laughs> mm-hmm. what she's experiencing. Okay. She yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. like onions. Loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's nothing personal. Okay. Mm, the more I can so self-regulate. Hard. It's not a bear. The more I can yep. self-regulate, recognize my add-ons, recognize my physical, emotional, and thought reactions, the more I can join her experiential reality without taking it personally. Really good. so hard not to take it personally. It's so, so hard. I'm gonna it's give you, so I'm going to give you another sermon here. Good. Okay. <laughs> here it is. Jesus hung on the cross, and he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's an implied message there. I yep. do know what they do and why. Ooh. That's what we're all called to do with each other. Oh. I'm there and I am looking and saying, Understand I know why my why. wife acts the way she does oh. and her yeah. experiential reality. And she knows why I get upset if someone puts me down wow. mm. or stresses that are coming at me. That's what we're called to be in a relationship is Christ like on the it's cross really where good. he was attacked for no other reason than that he was loving us and wanting to give us eternal life. Mm-hmm. And he says, I get it. Yes. You guys are scared. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. nervous. You're insecure. I came to earth to let you know I understand you so that you have a high priest in heaven that loves you, understands you, mm. and doesn't take offense when you have, when you betray me, when you deny me. I love you. I get wow. it. Powerful. Now, I'm not saying it's right to do that. I'm just telling you I understand. So I'm not justifying mm-hmm. our poor You're, actions. I'm not right. justifying my anger Because for justice-driven pers- people, that's that feels like a breach of morality. It, it feels does. Like a, exactly. a compromise. A compromise. Yeah, yeah, like an ethical compromise. And, and by the but way, not. compromise, people t- say you have to compromise in marriage. I don't believe you compromise. Yeah, I really like, okay? I, actually, I, this, oh, yeah, is this is on my good. list. This is on my list. Yeah, yeah go, go, go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. And it's okay that people <laughs> say, I get what they mean, but mm-hmm. I don't like it because yeah. when I compromise, it's like a scale mm-hmm. and I feel like you owe me because I gave you mm-hmm. last time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I do not compromise. <laughs> if my wife mm-hmm. wants to go to an opera and I say, yeah, let's go, we go together and I've been, and even if it was horrible, I enjoy it because I'm with her. I chose no to be with my mm-hmm. wife. There is no score. Mm-hmm. There is no compromising. Mm. Otherwise, I'm holding a scale and saying, okay, now you have to go with me yeah. to a football game. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. You, you got to go with me golf. You have to go. Which, Randy, wouldn't you say a lot of marriages mm-hmm. operate on that scale? Oh, Everything absolutely. Everything is, is back and forth, passive aggressive mm-hmm. or manipulative. That's right. And, and, it, and it, it robs them of true love because true That's love correct. wants to connect mm-hmm. and enjoy each other. That's correct. That's exactly right. And and so the example 
if you guys remember, I like to golf. So if someone called me right now and said, hey, we've got a jet at John Wayne Orange County yeah, Airport. This is one of my favorite things. And yeah. if they say <laughs> you've got four hours to get everything and come over and go golfing with us to Hawaii for four days, all expenses paid. Do I call my wife and ask her if I can go or do I call my wife and tell her I'm going? And that's the trick question, the by the way. Not, neither. Exactly. I listen, not Randy. Me- I listen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell her. <laughs> you know, I'm calling and saying, here's my plan. Here's what I'm planning on doing. Yes. What are your thoughts? And if she says mm-hmm. something like, yeah. well, we have a wedding this weekend, I can say, mm-hmm. ah, it's okay. I can miss it. It's your cousin. <laughs> Uh, I have a lot of other relatives. You're doing the wedding. You're performing it. Well, my brother's a minister. He can perform it. It's his cousin. Uh, you know, we could go through all these arguments. And at the end, if she says, yes, go and have fun, I'm saying, okay, even though we go and everything goes wrong, is she happy when I return? Mm. Everything went wrong for her. Everything went well for me. Is right, she, she went happy? to the wedding she by is. herself. You were gone. But she is happy for you in a healthy, I'm guessing. She's both. Trick she's question. Both. She's happy. She's she happy. Is. She's happy for me. This is happy that sad. I have fun. This is our favorite. Yeah, we do. And I'm going to join happy her sad. in happy her sad. sadness yep. and right. in the fact that the decision turned out to be poor. Mm, but right. you can't know that. It's the same as if I stayed home. Would I be happy or sad? Well, I'd be both. I'd be happy because I choose her. <laughs> I'd be sad right. cuz my friends are texting me pictures of Hawaii in the jet that I would have flown on. <laughs> right, right. You yeah. know, and so and you don't hold that rejoice. you don't hold that over her. No, no, cuz I chose. You chose. Oh man. That's powerful. Yeah. It wasn't a, she it did, wasn't she a didn't force you as your as your a wife that you have mm-hmm. to you chose her and that makes you happy. And I she love her doesn't more have than to a, and she doesn't have to pay for that. Correct. Yeah. So there's no payback wow. for anything. Oh, Otherwise, Nobody we do a gets scale. There's back. always always payback so if we powerful. do a scale. Yeah. Oh, so man. again, that's enjoying each other's experiential reality, mm-hmm. but you have to self-regulate. If you haven't mm-hmm. practiced self-regulation and it's not a bear, add-ons, and pet, mm-hmm. if you haven't practiced those types of things, then you're going to get angry, escalated. Mm-hmm. You're not going to join each other. You're not going to have conflict resolution because you're going to not join each other's experiential realities. You're not yep. going to understand why that person has a different way of experiencing the events. Mm-hmm. And I'm joining her in her being scared to be alone with all these people at a wedding mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or not yeah. liking it, not necessarily being scared, but not liking it. Mm-hmm. She yeah. knows I love golf, but I also love her more than golf. And she loves mm-hmm. me more than being alone. So we sometimes will say, no, either way is good. Mm-hmm. So if someone mm-hmm. says, do what you want, they'd better be honest with their statement of do what Ooh. you want. Oh, because yeah. if my wife says do what this you is want, where we, I'm this golfing. is where we can, I could I can get a little gray on this one. I can get a yep. little passive aggressive. Don't yep. when you say I can say Maybe things like I, I think so. <laughs> I, I could say things like um, do what you want or whatever's best for you or whatever's, be, you know, and um, if and I really have love what feeling, about have it. more feeling about it for those of us who don't maybe communicate well intimately and or like. Uh, but what you just said is if in a healthy marriage, I'm hearing you say, if you say it, you need to mean it. Yeah. And if you're upset about it, that's your add on. That's my add on. And that's Ooh. my problem, right? Yes. That's it's my your problem. Issue. So it's can you talk issue. about the it's your issue dynamic? It, because I would feel if that happened, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would feel all kinds of guilt. Oh, yeah. You would feel that mm-hmm. I made her sad because I went or mm-hmm. right. I wouldn't even be able to enjoy the trip mm-hmm. because I'd be thinking, Yes. This is not our, I'm using a hypothetical no, yeah, on this, but no. th- it, so help us unpack. It would be sad, them. sad. So yeah, it'd be sad, there sad. Would be we're, no, we're both sad. We're both sad. <laughs> it's just sad. <laughs> and that's, again, your add on at that point. Ooh, mm-hmm. that's, that's really good. Because yes. you're yeah. feeling guilty for something and you did nothing wrong. To me, yeah. it's Satan saying a lie to me that, oh, and your heart, you care, you love, you love your wife. You don't want her feeling sad, but yeah. you're not guilty for it. You're mm. sad that she couldn't tell the truth and tell you what she really wanted. Not guilty. So, somebody doesn't sad. have to feel guilty just because the other person is sad. That's right. Oh, man. That's I join you in the sadness. <laughs> that's, that's layer. Got Jesus, three more hours on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jesus went to Lazarus' grave and they yeah. yelled at him for coming yep. late and said, if you weren't late, 
Mm-hmm. They attacked him, Ooh. but he didn't mm-hmm. take the guilt. Mm-hmm. Right? He just joined them and loved oh, them and man. cried with them. And cried with them because he was late. Oh, he was just oh, saying, geez. oh, you're in pain, oh, guys. Man. You're in pain. See, he this took his so viewpoint hard. and put this it on so there hard. instead of, <laughs> you oh, said, man. and he cried because he was late. No, he cried because <laughs> they were sad. Because <laughs> they were sad. <laughs> He joined them and wept with them in their sorrow. Oh, man. And he knew he yep. was going to raise right. them, but he didn't take their right. attack personally. He didn't go to guilt. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the thing that ha- works when we're really working, again, the uh, recognition of our reactions. When we're working the whole, it's not a bare process. Mm-hmm. We then know it's not our fault if you went and chose to do something. It's Jamie that has the issue if she's upset or angry afterwards, and it's probably some add-on that's causing it. But if mm-hmm. you go and feel guilty, now it's your add-on, and now we're con- we're mm-hmm. really confusing because right. we have two different add-ons coming together instead of just the honesty. Oh, right. It's a lot of stuff. Sorry, guys. This is no, this is so, so good. good. It's good you to are hear good. it again, right? It's, good. it's so good to hear it again. <laughs> I know, man. Okay, we're coming to see you in a couple of weeks because uh, <laughs> we got to go to the next level. <laughs> um, question then: on, As far as someone who is always maybe I'm not talking like abusive marriage or abusive relationships. Maybe there's a dynamic that's off where one person's always guilty and apologizing and sad. And one person kind of wins due to maybe personality or protection or whatever. How does, how do two good people balance that out? This is not us. Don't worry. You're looking at me like, do I do this? (laughs) Tell me more. No, no, no. no. But you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. The the, the problem is, is okay. I'm going to give you a quick, statement to it, Mm -hmm. simplified, uh, and it's more complex, but simply the person being walked on Mm -hmm. and is being ran over, if you will, Mm -hmm. is not truly recognizing they're a child of God. So they're insecure. They're not stepping forth to say, I have value. I have a right to my opinion and my thought. So they're going to get walked on by the person that has more of an aggressive personality like I do. Mm -hmm. So the person that's getting walked on has to learn how to be assertive and recognize they're a child of God. They were made by God, Mm -hmm. and he did not say, oops. He said, I made you well, and you're awesome. You are a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. I made you. And so you have to build that person to recognize who they are. Now, if it Mm -hmm. can be done in church and reading the Bible, great. If not, that's where a professional comes in mm-hmm. to help find out why they can't see that they're a child of God that's been gifted. Scripture is very clear that everyone has a talent, a purpose. You don't mm-hmm. think the hand is more valuable than the foot. Right. Paul's right. real clear on this. So how do we help someone realize they have equal value? Mm-hmm. That's what we have to do. And when you have equal value and you respect each other, you don't walk on the other person. Mm-hmm. I right. still am real strong in my opinions, but my wife says no, and I can hear her. Mm-hmm. And I understand it because she's verbally stating it solidly, mm-hmm. and I'm open to learn and hear. Mm. Mm. Is this where imposing can kind of come in? It is exactly where imp- okay. imposing I, I'm really. Yes. I really loved what you talked about with Dee's personality because he was like, I guess I do impose. Like He felt bad for it at the time, and you were like, no. This is this is not something to apologize for. And you talked to what was the story about you guys were in Rome? It's the happy, sad and imposing and personalities all together. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. OK, um, <laughs> it's it's I, I'm, I'm going to say all of it. It'll take a few minutes. I don't know where okay. we are on time for you, but um, we're good. If are you're you good. OK? OK. OK. So <laughs> we went to Rome and we went upstairs in the Vatican. And at the top of the Vatican is St. Michael's Basilica. Mm -hmm. And so we went up there, or St. Peter's. St. Peter's, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. St. Peter's Basilica. So we went up there, and over to the right is the Pieta. And the Pieta is Michelangelo's work of Mother Mary holding the life-size body body of Jesus. It's a life-size sculpture. Mm -hmm. So we went over there. We stood there. Now, I was proud of myself because I stood there for at least a minute and a half <laughs> looking, and I thought it was good. My wife's still staring at it. So I went walking off while she's there, and I'm noticing where she is as I'm looking around at people and other things. And I come back, and I didn't say anything, which I was proud of myself because Norma had said, can we go now? And she's still fully engulfed in the, in the mm-hmm. uh, Pieta. So I stood next to her, 
I looked at her out of the corner of my eye. She wasn't moving. So I went again. I went walking <laughs> one more time, still watching where she is. Come back, stood next to her. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling like we got to get moving here. But I took a breath, calmed myself down, and I said, are you ready to go? And she, in my wife's loving, caring, sensitive way of 30 years at that point of marriage, she said, no. <laughs> so I'm going, okay, can you give me a little more than just no? <laughs> She's living happy, sad right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's, She's owning it. Into She's the, owning yeah, it. Talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> So I said, I, I took a breath again because I was ready to go. What do you mean, no? You know? So instead, I said, okay, what are you experiencing? What's going on? Mm, so I wanted oh, to join her experience of reality. Okay, mm. great. I'm yep. triggered, taking a breath, <laughs> slowing down. It's no bear. We're okay. <laughs> and she goes, and I'm not going to repeat it as well as she did, but she basically <laughs> said, I'm looking at a mother holding her son. And it's reminding me of what it was like when I carried Zach, our son, and our mm. dreams, our prayers over him. What was it when he was a little one in my tummy? And, and the times he would move and we would dream of what he's going to be when he grows up and where is he going to go? And we prayed over him and the birth and the joy of the birth and the pain of the birth and mm -hmm. holding him and feeding him and <laughs> making sure he didn't get hurt. And she went on and on. Oh. Well, by the time she's done, I'm sitting there going, oh, okay, you can stay here. <laughs> I'm crying and going, okay, yeah, good call. <laughs> so now I'm looking at the Pieta through a mother's eyes. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, and I cannot look at, at it ever again without seeing it from mm. a mother's eyes. Mm. And I saw it from a father's eyes. I hurt. I loved. But mm -hmm. she gave me a different perspective. Now, at the same time, I didn't lose myself in it. Yes. And yep. I said to her, I love it. We'll buy a book with the Pieta in it. And for the 17-hour <laughs> flight back, we can look at it and cry and talk all about it. <laughs> but we need to get moving because we'll miss the, the whole rest of the Vatican. And we'll miss, you know, the Sistine Chapel. And we'll miss all the rest of it. So let's go. Oh. And she said, oh, you're right. Oh. And so she honored me. I honored mm. her. Oh, and we got so to the good. Sistine Chapel where we sat for, again, another... <laughs> <laughs> I told her what a father's heart is for fa Adam and God to touch. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Oh, but, but I love what you said you didn't lose yourself and she didn't lose no. herself. That's right. We respect You were both and truly yourselves, mutual respect, mm. and there was happy, sad. You that's had to right. take a little more time there, right. and she eventually had to leave. <laughs> Or she and, probably and, knew that you were a little not wanting to be there. Oh, she knew that. Of yeah, course she but did. But you both are, this is just so healthy. It, I wouldn't <laughs> have gotten nearly out of that on, by myself mm -hmm. without respecting her. If I'd have been mm -hmm. forcing my way mm -hmm. on her and saying, we got to go, we got to go. Come on. Mm -hmm. We're going to miss the Sistine Chapel. Come on. She wouldn't right. have shared with me. We'd have right. been upset with each other the mm -hmm. rest of the day. Yep, yep, right. Yeah. You would have both felt cheated. Yes. Both yep. felt cheated. And, wow. and instead, we showed respect to mm. each other, and she shared hers, and I shared me. And we were who God made us and walked with yes. respect while being drastically different than each other. Right. And some people would say that was a compromise, but it's not. Mm. No, it's, there was it, no it was, mm -hmm. it was not a weighing. Mm. Mm -mm. It, is, it is a complete joining. It's Correct. intimacy. Yeah. It was. Exactly. Well said. Wow. That's exactly it, Dustin. It, it was not... I gave up something or she gave up. We both said, oh, yeah, we choose to finish and go down to the rest of the, mm -hmm. of the tour. That's powerful. You know, and, and we both chose that and loved each other and were much better off. And, boy, our flight back was fun. We were looking oh. through the book, by the way, oh. at all the, uh, all the artwork, you know. It wasn't we, a battle. We had fun. When we came back from the session with you, Randy, about um, – like I, I see you, that whole thing, yes. just seeing and sitting with somebody and just understanding someone and then the happy, sad and the imposing. We got home and do you remember? I don't know if you'll remember this, Dee, but we were unpacking our bags from the garage and uh, we implement everything. So like your terms have become <laughs> everyday language for us, right? So happy, sad, happy, sad or whatever. And so we get home and I take my bag and you know me, Randy, I take my bag and I drop it in the kitchen and I just go back to the bedroom. <laughs> and so Dustin comes back. You probably don't remember remember this and he goes I'm about to impose 
<laughs> but you had told me that it's not bad for him to impose and it's not bad for me to share my, I don't know what the verbiage you have put on it. Be honest about what I'm doing and make my own choice, not be infantilized, not be, I am an adult who can make a choice. Okay. And so he goes, I'm about to impose. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, if you you could have just taken your, <laughs> your suitcase back. You're already back, going to the bedroom. Back with you. <laughs> He's looking at what, Yeah, he goes, you're already going to the bedroom. Buddy. You, it would have been, you saved you. So I unpacked my own bag. He's not put out by it. Right. He's trying to help, right? right. This, he just wants me to have an easier right. life. And I said back, and it was so empowering, I think, for both of us. He didn't have to feel bad about giving me his opinion. And I didn't have to feel all guilty, like, oh, I disappointed him because I didn't plan my baggage drop right. I said, <laughs> I said, and I'm going to impose back. That was your verbiage. You go and you impose back. So I said, I shall now impose back, D. I don't care. If I have to make another trip, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. It is. It does nothing to me. It does not yep. bother me. I don't yep. mind the 50 steps there and the 50 steps back. I don't care. And it, we died laughing. We were like, this is like, it's a silly example for what could work on a large scale. <laughs> for sure. I think. <laughs> it, it, no, no. That was, that's a beautiful example. What you're doing <laughs> is you are actually aware of your physical, emotional, and thought reactions. Uh-huh. Yeah. You were also not taking it personal. You were celebrating your Which differences. Which is a huge victory for me because I take everything personal. <laughs> it's, yep. it's easy for all of us to take it yeah. personally. That, yeah. uh, to me, that's what Satan wins is when he mm -hmm. makes everything personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and it's not. It's, it's I, I sometimes am an idiot. Can you give me grace when I'm being an idiot? And so yeah. don't take it personal. I'm just being high energy. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm wanting to go and see the rest of the Vatican and... I didn't do a good job that time of being calm. Can you give me grace and say, I know you're excited, Randy, to see the rest of Vatican, mm -hmm. but I'm not done yet. You know, mm -hmm. she could have yes. easily told me that. And I go, okay, okay. And and I feel accepted. I feel yes. known. Yeah. So it's really about, again, conflict resolution begins with celebrating that we're all different and have different experiential Man. realities. God made us and we're good. Some of those experiential realities are because of our personality that God's given. Some of it is because of our perspectives that are learned and injuries and hurts and our protections. But yep. if we understand that, we can work through those so that we are more stable in life and we're more vibrant living instead of vigilant living. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I think, Randy... Even just some of your thoughts have helped me more as a pastor hmm. oh, because good. I think that um, I think, you know, especially as a, as a pastor, you just, you're called on to fix so many things that oftentimes you, you don't operate like Jesus operates as far as weeping with people. Hmm. You're quick to, to try to, to fix, fix it. And mm -hmm. it's the things I do with Jamie, the things I could be guilty of in relationships or in mentoring or, or coaching in going, going to quick and, and just applying this. I think anybody that's listening could just, apply, even if you're single, you could just apply this principle to really sit with people. Mm -hmm. So I, I say sometimes, which I, I don't know if it's the right way to say it, but I, I say lis listening to understand versus listening to respond, mm -hmm. which I'm Excellent. guilty of the listening to, to respond, <laughs> but we're, it, where it's difficult sometimes, sometimes it's easier to do it with other people than with Jamie mm -hmm. because I think of the add-ons. Mm -hmm. Would you is is that mm -hmm. because of, of the mm -hmm. the history and I I care about her. That's right. And so I want to defend myself to her. <laughs> Someone else I I love I care I I care about, but I can sit with them in in that. But it's why is it hardest hmm. to sit with the people you love the most? That's a really good question. Because you're inviting them into your Holy of Holies area. Mm. So intimacy. Again, if we have time, then, and then let me go to Jerusalem walls. Do you remember okay. that? Yeah. 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 Because mm -hmm. okay. yeah. it fits here so well. Yes. That's good. Jerusalem had walls and they built it to protect against the enemy. Okay. So the walls, and they had 12 gates representing each tribe of Israel. And each gate was defended. The main gate was built on shale, loose rock at an angle so that people who would come in to try to fight would have a disadvantage. So each gate is guarded. We are the new Jerusalem. 
That's who we are. We now have what's called boundaries. So if you read the Townsend books, the <laughs> Cloud yes. and Townsend yeah. boundaries books, that's, so good. that's yeah. the new, Great. that's the Jerusalem walls. So we need to have walls and boundaries and limits. Who are yeah. we allowing into our city? Now, mm. not everyone was allowed into the city. And, but those who were allowed in, some of them were allowed only to the marketplace. And that was it. Because the city needs to have trading and needs to have bartering and have food and goods to be able to exist. The same as us. We have people that come to our marketplace. Not everyone should come into our city, nor should everyone yeah. come beyond the marketplace. So now you have the outer courts of the temple, which Jesus cleaned up because they were selling and, mm -hmm. and desecrating his house. Who's allowed to the outer courts of the temple? Only Jews. So all the people who come to Jerusalem are not allowed in. Some are allowed to the marketplace, and Jews only were allowed into the temple and to the outer courts of the temple. Mm -hmm. So you're lessening the number each time of who's allowed in. They have to be safer, more qualified, more protected people that are not going to harm you each time. So we evaluate who's safe and who are we allowing in each level. Now, those who were allowed into the inner courts of the temple, the sanctuary itself, were those who presented themselves to the priest and gave an offering and showed themselves to be clean. Yep. Okay? So then they were allowed into the, uh, to the sanctuary. If you spat upon the floor in the sanctuary, they would take you outside the dung gate and stone you. <laughs> Throw and you not, and, out there. And I know you're in California, but not medicinally. <laughs> but not medicinally. <laughs> no matter what state you're in, not medicinally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and they would they would kill you. We have the right, if someone comes into my temple, to say, you are not showing me respect in my temple. This Ooh. is my sacred area. Yep. Yep. So mm. each level is more sacred. Then you have the yep. Holy of Holies, yep. which is where a priest would go in to offer the, the offering for all of Israel. God would speak to them, give them a word for Israel, and they would come out to give the word to all of Israel, what God told them. But when they would enter, they entered with a rope around their ankle. Because if they weren't the right priest, God would kill them. <laughs> <laughs> no one else wanted to go in, so they would pull them out <laughs> instead of going in. So each level is more and more intimate, more and more sacred. We are the New Jerusalem. We have a Holy of Holies area that only one or two people should be in with us. We have the sanctuary where only a few, if we look at Jesus, he had Peter and he had John the Beloved, where his Holy of Holies people. The temple, the sanctuary part, were his apostles, his twelve. The outer courts were hundreds, mm -hmm. and outside that in the marketplace were thousands. Mm -hmm. And he says, I've come to the children of Israel, not to the rest of the world. So he limited who would be allowed in. Mm -hmm. Those numbers are probably pretty close to what we have to have. Mm -hmm. So the more someone enters and we allow them into our sacred areas, the more intimate we become, the more they can hurt us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she yeah. is in your Holy of Holies, of course yeah. she's going to hurt you easier. Of course you're going to hurt her easier. Yeah. If we don't have all the skills of it's not a bear stuff that we've talked about, yeah. mm -hmm. if we don't have the respect of each other's experiential realities, then when someone steps into my temple, I'm going to get offended easily. Oh, now, man. I was a chaplain's assistant in the Army, mm -hmm. and a chaplain's assistant helps all chapels, chaplains of all faiths. So you have to learn how to support each other. We were being taught how to do that with a Catholic priest. And for those that don't know, each chapel at, in, the, in the service is changed by the insignia and the other signs that are put out to make it a different faith, whether it's a Jewish faith or a Catholic or Protestant or Muslim. Mm -hmm. It changes. The chapel itself is changed by the priest that's doing the service. Yeah. Catholic priests, as they were teaching us, said, to go and get the holy water that's at the beginning that you dip in and you are it's sacred holy water and get it as soon as the service is over. 
because some of the Protestant boys coming in would put their cigarettes out in the holy <laughs> water and the Catholic <laughs> boys would get into a fight with them is what he was telling us. This is 40 years ago. <laughs> Actually, it was 50 years ago. I hate to say that. <laughs> it's been a while. So he was telling us to be getting the holy water quickly because it would cause fights. Now, the Protestants that were putting cigarettes out in the holy water were not doing it to be mean. They mm -hmm. didn't know what was sacred to the other person. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. So we have to know oh, who man. we are, what our physical, and emotional, and thought reactions us. are. That's really good. We have oh. to know what our add-ons are. We have to know our personality, our perspectives, who we are, because I don't know when my wife has stepped on my holy areas, and I don't know when I've stepped on hers, and I didn't mean it. I was trying to help her right. and love her, or she was trying to help and love me. Yes. So the more we can do this recognition of our own selves, hmm. celebrate the other person, the more we'll be respectful of the temple. Yes. You are the new Jerusalem. You house God. Each of us houses God inside yep. us. We need to respect that, honor that. So you're going to get more triggered by her, and, and both of you will be triggered more by each other because— you go to holy places together. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. let everyone into my temple. Yeah. Right. About 12 or 15 get into the sanctuary. Right. Marketplace and temple, I let more in. But not everyone should be in my temple. That's not yeah. what we're called to do. Would yeah. you say identifying add-ons, a part of the way to identify them, is when the trigger kind of shows up? Or when there's, or what to identify what's sacred you know, like like something could really might really trigger me or be really important to me that's not to him. How does one I, I like in healthy ways identify like this is a really big thing for me? Well, I'll give you an example and then we'll we'll say yeah. that because that's a great question. For me, I was made fun of in junior high and elementary school for music because I couldn't mm -hmm. carry a tune and and people made fun of me. So I started saying that I was tone deaf, mm -hmm. and God in His humor. I used that all the way through junior high and high school. Mm -hmm. Dances, oh, I don't know, I'm tone deaf. I can't mm -hmm. can't sing, can't dance. Got to uh, college, and who do I meet? A professional <laughs> singer. Singer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, that in itself is humorous, but I always told her I was tone deaf. So one day she said, can you whistle? And I did. Well, you cannot whistle a tune if you're tone deaf. Mm -hmm. So she, in trying to help me, said, you are not tone deaf. You're just a poor musician. <laughs> so in that moment, she took away all my protective oh. patterns and defenses of why I was poor at music. Right. Because I had said for years that I was tone deaf, which was a lie, but it was what made me feel good and what I mm -hmm. thought. I actually believed yeah. it. And she took away my protective defenses wow. with a good intent. Mm. And I got angry. I really did. I got angry. Yeah. And we had to work through that. And she didn't yep. mean that. Right. So that was a sacred thing for me. Yeah. My yeah, singing, yeah. my poor singing. Mm. Now, mm. if you want me to sing, I'll do it. You going <laughs> to suffer. I don't care. Because <laughs> I have taken that which I held in my temple yep. as yep. sacred because yep. wow. it was so painful and hurtful. It now is in the dung pile it's itself. Free. I oh, don't man. care. Oh, it doesn't That's define so me. Good. That's right. so, so good. So when I react, when we react to something more intensely than the situation calls for, and mm -hmm. we can see the reality, we know it's probably an add-on. What's the add-on? As we identify it, then we can work through it. Now, there are some things that are sacred, and mm -hmm. that's why a husband and wife, as we get more intimate and share, there are things, I'm not going to tell you anything about my wife, or she's not going to tell about me. We're sacred. It's ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to hold that sacredly. Yes. But there are many things that we hold sacredly that are like my poor singing. They're really not sacred. They're, <laughs> They're not sacred. I'm no we good. We hold them like they are. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, I think. That's right. That's that. heavy. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Man, Randy, you are so good. Seriously, mm -hmm. it's so, I think it's kind of just puts verbiage, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure people listening feel the same way. It, it puts words 
on a lot of conflict or feelings that a lot of us are going through. And uh, I know it, it's just helped us and hopefully people listening, they enjoy a little sneak peek in, mm-hmm. in one of our <laughs> sessions, but it, um, <laughs> it, it really is just that your, your way of communicating mm-hmm. it is really helpful. It, it's, it, it's Jamie said it, but it's become our own language. Mm-hmm. So we're being able to identify, I see you, it's not a bear and you practically use those things and, uh, and, and just continue this journey. It's awesome. Perfect. Beautiful. We're grateful for you, Randy. Oh, you guys well, fun. make me we'll feel good. We'll see you hopefully in a few weeks. <laughs> We're gonna come see you. Okay. <laughs> I, Thank I, you I for this. <laughs> Thank you so much for real. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it before you log out because Chris thank will you. kill me. My guy will kill me, me if good. I don't thank stop you. it first. Thank you for all. Thank you for everything and all you're still gonna do with us. <laughs> Get ready. We're we're coming and hot. <laughs> Blessings. Blessings. We, we love you, Randy. Thank you. We love Bye. you. See you. <laughs>